You may know uh, Tomihiko Morimi. Is someone who we've talked about a lot recently. Yep. So um, it's one of those authors where you see a bunch of media, and then later you find out there's a creator that is related to all of them, and you like you find a thread and you start tugging at right, it. Right. So there's been a bunch of anime, right? Eccentric Family. Yep. Eccentric Family Two. Yep. Night on Night is Young. Walk on Girl. Yep. Uh, Tatami Galaxy. Tatami Galaxy, which we're going to talk about now. Wasn't there another one? Penguin Highway. Oh, uh, that's coming soon, right? Yep. Anyway, we've seen anime. I guess the novel was written in 2010. We've seen anime based on all these things, and some of those anime have been animated by the same teams, right? So, yep. like Masaki Yuasa, he animated what we're going to talk about today, which is uh, Tatami Galaxy. Tatami Galaxy, but also he did Walk On Girl, which is very related. But right. also not and related. And then Eccentric Family, Eccentric Family 2, obviously animated by the same studio. Which uh, I just want to point out, uh, if you haven't watched Eccentric Family, we reviewed both seasons. You should go watch it. It's one of the best shows to come out it's a real in good a long anime. time. It is one of the best anime there is right now. Frog in a well. Anyway, oh uh, but all of these are based on novels written by Tomihiko Morimi. And hopefully these novels will be just translated so I can read them directly and yep. not just have to watch anime adaptations. I really want to read the Eccentric Family but novels. But based on all these anime adaptations of Morimi's work, I am a fan of Morimi's work indirectly. Ah, indirect kiss. So once I found out, because we were when we saw uh, Night of Short Walk on Girl in the theater at the end... There's the interview with Yuasa and after he kept the talking, credits. He kept bringing up Tatami Galaxy. He kept talking about Tatami Galaxy. And I'm like, I've heard of Tatami Galaxy, and I haven't watched it. Yep. I think I will go home and watch it. So I did. And I watched like a handful of episodes. I've seen like three and a quarter episodes. I've seen a similar amount. I'd have to, you know. And I, haven't, I just haven't finished it, but I've definitely done enough to talk about. Right? Because, uh, I mean, that's more than we usually talk about anime watching less episodes than that. Yep. <laughs> Basically, it's either we talk about an anime scene a few episodes, or we watch the, the whole episodes. thing as fast as possible, and then we talked about it. Right. Uh, the only reason I didn't watch this as fast as possible is because I had so many other things to do. It's like, it you know, we, it, it was con season. We had a lot of conventions. It's like there's other things that kept taking up my time, so I couldn't just sit down and watch a whole bunch of anime. But every time I got a chance, I like squeezed in one episode. I only just got like four or five chances. Yep. <laughs> Uh, and now, when I want to watch even more of it, because I was like, oh, let me go refresh. Yeah. We're going to do an episode. I go on Crunchyroll, and Rim messaged me today. He's like, yeah, it ain't there. Yep, because last night, I was like, I've only seen like three episodes. I, I should watch a bunch tonight. I go to Crunchyroll, and just couldn't find it. And I Googled around a little bit, and I could not find anywhere to watch it legally. Yeah, if I would have known it was going to go off Crunchyroll, I would have like bailed on something else to watch it before it got taken off. And now I'm going to have to resort to like piracy or something to, to watch the rest of this show. Yep, and I really like it's. I could. I'm, there might be a place to watch it legally, but in a cursory search, I was not able to find it. And in this day and age, if you can't find the legal place to watch it by typing the name of it into Google, everyone involved has failed, and you can pirate it at that point. Right. But so actually, it says availability. I think it got taken down. Sorry, due to licensing limitations, videos are unavailable. In your region. All right. So they just, I guess the U.S. distribution thing expired, maybe, whatever. Yep. Anyway. Which is a sh so that was a shame because I really like this show and I want to watch the rest of it. And <laughs> I feel like I'm going to have to pirate it. Right. So the thing is, like I said when we were talking about, uh, even though I hadn't watched all this and still haven't watched all of it, like I said when we were talking about Walk On Girl, I've said, man, you know, because I watched a couple episodes of this before we did our Walk On Girl episode. I was like, man, you got you. It's hard to talk about Walk On Girl, the anime, if you haven't seen Tommy Galaxy, the anime, because both by Yuasa, both based on works from the same author. But what Yuasa does here, the most notable thing, is similar to Tezuka manga, where he'll have the same characters playing the same quote actors playing yep. different act characters in different things. Yep. The same exact character designs and maybe even voices. I have to go verify that. I didn't verify the I voices. I didn't verify the voices, but there was no disjointedness, so I feel like it's the same voices. It's 100% the same character designs. Yep, so in Walk-On Girl... Are used in both, right? In so Walk-On Girl, there's a dude who is 0.1 steps above being a bum. Yep. Who may or may not... Be a magical creature. May not of he's, some he's kind. Tengu adjacent. Yeah, he he's got he, like a big old chin. Yep, he might just be a bum who th who acts like he's a Tengu. Right. He might actually be a Tengu. But anyway, there's a in Tatami Galaxy. Th there is that a, person plays someone who's 
point two steps above being a bum. Right. It's a very similar character. <laughs> Who right. is probably a god. Yeah, you can imagine an eccentric family. They, you could tell eccentric family with that same character being the Tengu grandpa guy. Oh, my God. That character could... could you, if you Only see, older. If you saw any character from eccentric family or Tatami Galaxy or Walk On Girl in the background of the other shows, it just makes sense they're all in the same universe. Right. For example, eccentric family. There's the girl who's always like turning into objects. You never see her. Yep. That could be... You could use the character design for... The girl from Walk On Girl or the girl in Tatami Galaxy for that character. Yep. Right? You know, main guy in Eccentric Family, main Tanuki guy, could be main college dude, from right? right? It's like you can see that the author sort of has, you know, characters that fill similar adjacent-ish personalities and roles in their stories. And because the same animation team did... You know, these two anime, the Tommy Galaxy and Walk On Girl, they use the same character designs, right? There's like Devilly Guy, you know. Yep, uh, Devilly Guy, buff, Bum. Buff, buff Dude, buff, Ernest, jo buff Jock Dude. Ernest, male protagonist. Yep. Like, There's a lot of reused character designs from both, and the characters that share the designs share personalities quite a bit. Anyway, so what's the Tommy Galaxy actually <laughs> freaking about? So there's this dude. And he is looking to have, like, the perfect, most wonderful college existence. Yeah, what does he say? He wants to go to college and find a raven-haired girlfriend. Right. So he's got these ideas about college. He wants college to be, like, amazing. He's, he goes to college. He's trying to fulfill his dream of, you know, what's going to happen in college. So he, each episode, it's an episodic show, surprisingly. Yep. I'm sure it's not episodic at the end, but it's episodic at least most of the way. Uh, I've read some, like, episode descriptions. Each episode, he joins a club at the college. So this, my favorite so far is the bicycling club. Yeah, the bike one's good <laughs> because of how badly it goes. <laughs> right. But uh, there's other clubs he joins, like a drama club, right, was one of them, I think. Yeah, the first three episodes are tennis club, film club. Film club. Remember with the pervert guy? Right, right, right. Yeah, anyway, each episode, he joins a different club, and crazy stuff happens. But all in like the same circle, like but the girl he likes that he can't talk to is like in the club or like right. nearby. There's the same each, even though each episode is different in terms of the club he joins and the exact drama that happens. There's the same format of how the episode breaks down, right? Early, and he makes a promise to this girl, right, and then. He's got her like little thing hanging from the from the the, the pull string on his and his yep. light and his thing right and he can't remember to give it back to her you know even though she has the rest of the set he has the he has the one that she's missing and then there's the evil dude comes and makes mischief with oh, to mess just up looks like a demon yeah he messes up the he messes up the club's business right the Crazy old Tengu adjacent guy messes yep. gets in the mix. Who is the best and my favorite character? Yeah, uh, the most rim like character. Yeah, it's a very rim adjacent. <laughs> I love so the description of him in the uh, in this Wikipedia is, uh, and it's it, it is similar to how he's described in the show. An eighth year super senior, mm -hmm. <laughs> very similar to some people we knew in college ourselves who were still around, maybe. 1.1 steps above being a homeless bum, mm -hmm. somehow still in the school. Yeah. But anyway, uh, and I guess, you know, that char that Tengu-ish character is sort of like the mentor master-ish in a way. Like he's learning from him, sort of. Yep. Anyway. I mean, the vague gist of it is he sort of gives this ultimatum to the main guy of, yo, I'm a god. Right. Uh, you're either, I'm going to have you date this girl or that shithead you know and don't like, but you're also best friends with Dater. Right. So the episode, you know, as he joins the club, he's, you know, he's trying to do stuff in the club. He's usually bad at whatever the club is. He's bad at biking. He's bad at filming. He's not helping much, right? Yep. He's sort of failing. And then, you know, as things are sort of collapsing because of his failure, despite his attempts to succeed and his, de de you know, devolving into making mischief instead of participating and being nice and doing a yep. good job. Well, like the first episode, he the bumps tennis club. In, he bumps into the fortune teller. Yep. I think the fortune teller. Every time. It, I, I gotta Same go back and watch teller. again. I'm pretty sure the fortune teller raised her price every episode that Wait, I watched. I didn't notice. The fortune telling part is like usually identical every episode. She says basically the same thing. Right, yep. every time. 
Uh, he feels like he remembers this fortune teller. But he doesn't do what she says. But he doesn't do what the fortune teller says. He does what Ozu says instead. Right. Then the whole thing collapses in a giant climax clusterfuck that's amazing. Yep. And then there's the end of the show, the end of the episode happens, and the end of the episode is this animation of like time rewinding. And then the next episode, it's like he's back at the beginning of college again. So he's replaying sort of a Groundhog Day situation, trying to live this perfect college life. And even though it's each episode he's joining a different club and things are a little different, getting a little crazier, a little more twisted, a little more advanced each time, you feel like with each episode he's getting closer to not fucking up. Yep. So far, at least in the first, you know, I, I imagine he's not going to figure it out to the last episode. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, you know, from the four or five episodes I've seen, it's pretty the same structure, just different clubs every time. Uh, but it's it's still fascinating. And I can imagine, you can just imagine that at the end, he's finally going to get it right. Yep. But what is right? What is a perfect college experience? Well, hopefully m- remembering the thing he's forgetting and doing what the fortune teller yep. says to do. Because not to spoil Walk On Girl, which has a similar story in some ways, it sort of has this moral of like your rose colored glasses of what you wanted versus what you actually wanted versus the complexities of a real world and what actually happens, all set to the backdrop of. All the kinds of crazy people and crap that happens in college. Yep. So the structure of, you know, like, Walk On Girl isn't doing the time rewinding thing. It's the it's, it's one got, long It has night. this four seasons thing. This four yep. seasons that play out in one night is the structure. So here, it's a similar thing where there is a time-based structure of college playing out and rewinding, right? So I, I, you know, I guess Eccentric Family doesn't have this structure, but is it, but the the two novels that Yuasa adapted yep. have some sort of you know time based thing going on. But I guess this and Walk On Girl both really, really capture this vague nostalgic feeling I have for my own college life and like RIT anime and like that kind of environment where everything. Feels bigger and more important right. than it Walk really On is. Girl also did have a college with a club that was yep. significant, right? Yep, in the sense of like you see people in clubs who are treating it like it's way more important than it really is. And Which also see- makes you think of, you know, Utena. <laughs> yep, but then you see the people post college or rem- reminiscing on that makes club. you think of Maho Takaita. <laughs> yep. Or uh, any of the other anime with clubs. Yep. El Hazard? Ooh, nah, no. Elizard is just turns into Escaflone. Elizard was just a weird thing in the basement, right? Yep. Elizard doesn't really get back. Elizard, the good OAV, the not the TV show that's bad. I'm just trying to remember ways. animes that have school clubs. Yeah, but the oh, one. Oh, uh, 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 the one I didn't watch all of, Haruhi. Oh, yeah, Haruhi. Alien Haruhi club. does some stuff. Anyway. Also a time based situation, but right? Boy, where this one fits more with Utena is these more ideas of. The thing, the way you see the world when you're in college is very different from the way you see it outside of college. And you overestimate the importance and the grandeur and scale of the things you're doing and the people around you. Like, you see these legendary... Well, because when your world is small, right? Your, your Everything pond, else your, seems big. Your pond is small. That lily pad seems huge. And then when, you know, you don't see the whole world until you leave college. And you're yep. like, oh, yeah, no one cares about that. Yep. Like the, the world is big, only big things are big. Like when you're in college, this the eight year super senior is like this legendary figure in the local community. Right. When you're an adult, the eight year super senior is a bum. The fuck is wrong with that guy? It's just a bum walking yeah. around the street. What the hell is that? You st- still taking one credit hour a year? Like what are you doing? What are you doing, man? <laughs> but yeah, so, if you like other things based on the works of what Morimi? Yep. I can never get the name right. Uh, if you have. Uh, if you if like you other saw, Yuasa things. If you saw Walk On Girl, The Night Is Young, and liked it, just watch this. Yeah, this one actually came first. This was on the Noe Tamina block, which is, uh, it's sort of like a- Back in like 2010. Wow, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so if you don't, if you don't know, Noe Tamina is the word animation spelled backwards, and it's a, it's a programming block on a Japanese TV channel. I forget which one. Fuji TV. Fuji TV. So on Fuji TV at some time, I think it might be late at night, I'm guessing- uh, they they're like, all right, it's Noe Tamina time. It's sort of like how you know this tsunami or Adult, Adult Swim, Adult Swim, and they show a bunch of anime, and those anime are usually the good anime. Yep. It's usually right. If something's a Noe Tamina anime, odds are it's probably good. 
it's probably something about it's not going to be some some garbage kids show it's not going to be you know some some like uh shonen trashy show like your pedal <laughs> right it's going to be actually a, a show with some sort of artistic merit to it uh and this is one of those yep so it's worth watching uh I wish it was still on Crunchyroll. So if you can't get a hold of it, figure out how to get it somehow. This, you have an internet. You can find out how to get the show. I'm going to figure it out when I get home. Yep, because I'm going to watch the rest of it, and maybe we'll do a final thoughts on it at some point. Because It's I, only like 13 episodes, right? 11. 11. So, yeah. oh, I man, I was like almost halfway done. Yeah. I could have made it. 